Let's take the Sony A7R4 on an adventure to one of my favorite places in the country, Grand Teton National Park. Come on, let's go. Sunrise over Orlando, Florida. A flat land full of houses, magical mice, and alligator-filled lakes. A few hours later, and that flat land gives way to towering craggy peaks and deep plunging valleys. Toto, I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. A quick descent through some amazingly thick clouds reveals something much better, a massive mountain peak covered in snow. This is Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and I'm here to attend WildSpeak 2019, an evening of incredible stories, amazing videos, and breathtaking images from the International League of Conservation Photographers. That sounds like a group of superheroes, doesn't it? Well, that's because it is. The ILCP is a group of storytellers dedicating their lives to conservation, and their presentation was the perfect balance of entertainment, education, and inspiration, which proved to be an excellent appetizer for the main course. Being able to shoot alongside three other extremely talented photographers in one of my favorite locations on the planet. Morning couldn't come soon enough. And as usual, morning came knocking at my door way too soon. But we march on like eager soldiers or starving zombies. Either way, we're ready for action as we finally arrive at our destination at 6 a.m. Our Lazy S Ranch, a dude ranch situated on just over 300 acres of pristine forest and pastures. But the early morning shooting conditions weren't the greatest. In fact, they were kind of... Yeah, I'd say that about sums it up. But the frigid morning chill, icy intermittent rain, and thick clouds can't stop Charlie from searching for that perfect shot. And as soon as the light starts to filter through the clouds, an eerie sound echoes across the land. And that sound is a massive bull elk. Let's see if we can find him. And the hike through the rain-soaked terrain begins. Every time I visit this magical place, there's always this overwhelming sense of wonder because the wildlife here is just unparalleled. You have the occasional eagle soaring past fog-covered mountains, tiny little chipmunks scurrying about, pausing occasionally to grab a bite to eat, small birds like this pine siskin who ever so graciously pose on rain-soaked thistle flowers turned brown by the cooler fall temperatures, and pine trees filled with birds like this Clark's nutcracker who could care less about the rain. This bird is more interested in eating pine nuts, and that makes for the perfect photography subject. Rain or shine, a bird's gotta eat, and I guess pine nuts are the perfect choice. I love photographing wildlife in the rain. The water streaking through the background adds to the mood, and it also adds a little extra texture to the shot. Sure, you might be challenged by light, but this type of softer filtered light makes for nice even exposures. And some of my all-time favorite shots were taken during rainy conditions just like this. But let's keep moving and see if we can find that bugling elk. Now this is interesting. A bull elk has been rubbing his antlers on this little tree and he's pulled off most of the bark. This is a really good sign that we're on the right track. We're getting close, but there's so many distractions like this cute little pine marten who pauses briefly to check us out before scurrying up a tree. A great horned owl silently glides in, lands on a tree, and gives us an unapproving glance. Yeah, yeah, I know, we're in your space, but we just want to come see some of those big elk. Hours pass in what feels like minutes, and the next thing I know, we're surrounded by trees and laying at my feet. A semi-fresh elk shed we found out in the middle of the forest. And we're in a national park, so you're not allowed to keep it, but it's still pretty cool. It looks like something has been munching on the end right here. Let's check that out, look. Ah, that's awesome. The search for the king of the forest continues as his haunting call leads us deeper into the woods. And the rain starts to fall once again, but who could complain? I mean, we're in Jackson Hole, it's just amazing. And sometimes you have to stop and check out the small things like this group of water striders. Insects that are so tiny, they literally walk on the water surface. But on the other side of the river, I see some movement in the brush. Is it the massive bugling elk king? Well, sort of. 
This definitely isn't the king, but the king can't be far behind. And as our crew of ragtag photographers rounds the corner, the self-proclaimed king of the forest makes himself known. And on his head, a massive crown of spikes that doubles as a deadly weapon. A deadly weapon that has seen some recent use because this king's crown has been ripped in half. But that doesn't stop him from rounding up a harem of beautiful female elk and moving further into the forest. But there are others like these two bulls, one of which who seems to have a really curious stare about it. And then we see the ultra rare four-eared, four-eyed female elk. Of course, I'm kidding here. And those bulging eyes are a good sign that we probably should back off and leave these beauties alone. Let's see what else we can find. As I mentioned before, you just never know what you're going to find hiking out here. And finding a meaty pile of bones at the base of a tree isn't exactly what I was looking for. And these massive grizzly bear claw marks in the tree aren't really that comforting either. Look at the size of these things. They're massive. Just think about this. A bear with its claws just scratched this tree like it was nothing. And yeah, I think it's a good time to leave this area. You know it's a good day when Nick Page is your chauffeur. <laughs> we might not see anything, but the driving will be amazing. <laughs> so far it is. And off we go into the wild blue yonder, searching for anything to photograph. And our first subject, a mother moose and her calf. And how nice of them to pose for a family portrait. Moose are such neat looking animals. They're so tall and gangly. They look like part horse, part donkey, throwing a little bit of giraffe because they're all legs. And the locals here, they call them swamp donkeys. And that name fits so well. These animals love to graze on grass and they love to eat vegetation that grows below the surface of the water in areas just like this. So what's on the menu down there? Let's take a look. Wow, I would have never guessed there was so much vegetation under the surface of the water. That's amazing. And now I know why the moose like to graze here. And while I was busy shoving my phone in that nice clear water, Nick Page was shooting some landscapes. Let's see what he's up to. Got some really interesting clouds and light. And here with awesome landscape photographer Nick Page. Yeah, that's my official title. Yeah, <laughs> he's doing some really cool stuff. Yeah. With a zoom. It's got a really cool, look, man. Yeah. There it goes, okay, with what in fuck? Long lenses are so underrated for landscape photography. It's so much fun when you have these dramatic peaks to be able to reach out at like 300, 400 millimeters and just grab little pieces, especially when you have all the clouds and the atmosphere rolling in. It's just a, it's a piece of photography that piss, people miss out on a lot. Yeah. Like it's really tempting to just grab the wide angle lens all the time, but sometimes it's the telephoto lenses that give you something different. Yeah, that looks cool. And if you're not following this guy, you should, because he does killer landscape stuff. I'll put links to all of his stuff in the description below and go check him out. Grand Teton National Park is an amazing place filled with so much incredible wildlife and too many epic vistas to count. A place where the Old West still lives on and time seems to move at a much different pace. A place where you can easily find your way while getting lost. But at the end of the day, it is a place where four adult photographers embraced a childlike wonder of the world around them, joked and laughed, all while sharing their passion for this truly magical art form we call photography. It seems like every time I go to the Tetons, I learn something new, that being able to look underwater and see what all those moose eat was absolutely amazing. And I'm gonna try to start including a lot more underwater footage in my stuff because that, again, to me, that was an amazing experience. I'd really like to thank David and the people at Sony for having me out, flying me out there. Um, without them, this video wouldn't have happened and you, none of you would have been able to come along with me. So extra special thanks to them. Thanks to Ryan, Nick Page, and Charlie, all excellent photographers. And it was amazing to spend time around them and see the world through their eyes. That was such a cool experience. And thanks to you for sticking around to the end and watching. 
Don't forget to click that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done that because I got a lot of cool videos coming up. I got another one coming up here really soon with some other amazing photographers from the Teton, Steve Mathis and Isaac Spots. That's going to be great. We go out looking for a, uh, what was it, a great gray owl and maybe we find it, maybe we not. You have to stick around to see that. And until next time, I'll see you later.